Good morning, guys. So this will be uh, my last video with the Trident. I'm going to do a little pros and cons at the end of this video, or maybe even during it. Just letting you guys know that. So right now we're idled right up. We're only doing 12 and a half. That way I don't get too out of control while I'm holding my phone. I find this thing to be annoyingly loud. I don't know if it's just the pitch of the noise level. So, yeah. But in saying that though, if you were to idle, say, idle this thing down to around that 1800, all of a sudden it's really quiet. Well, it's not, it's not Patriot quiet by any means, but it's a lot quieter. And yet, at 1800 RPM, so your concern and my concern is the same. Well, it's going to get kind of doggy because it doesn't have the technology uh, to maintain top road speed, say 40 mile an hour empty at 1800. If you want to achieve that 40 miles an hour, you need to be full out. Um, but in the field, in the field, you can idle it back. And as long as you're not in mountains, it still has a lot of snap. So that's good. So that is definitely how I would have to be running it. So this is only my third load. And uh, oh, going a little off center here, better nudge a little bit in my tracks. And then I'm gonna jump out. Brian's put uh, about a half load on. And uh, then Mark, who's fresh off the deer, He's going to hop in this thing and kind of compare it to the deer, 4060. So I'm kind of excited to hear about that as well. And there's the Patriot spraying just across the, across the way there. These chickpeas are quite wet. If you were to look down at the tires, they're just soaked. And there wasn't hardly any dew this morning. There's no dew on the vehicles. There was very little dew in the grass. Uh, but chickpeas pretty much create their own ecosystem and they're always wet, which also adds to their disease pressure. So yeah, if you're not familiar with chickpeas, they're very hard to keep up here in uh, Saskatchewan. Um, we spray these things pretty much every seven to 10 days. This year has been exceptionally bad just due to it's been so wet this July and that's, that's abnormal for us. Um, we put down a fungicide and in four days, they're gonna be pushing right through that fungicide. We get lesions, we get, uh, oh yeah, it's just bad news, bad news bears. So yeah, very hard to keep, very expensive crop to grow. You're kicking out a whole pile of cash up front and you're hoping that you're gonna be able to get the crop in the fall without a freezing. But uh, there's another sprayer over there, there's two, and the 4060s down here. Oh yeah, it's way over there. I don't think you can see it. It's on the move, nope, you can't see it. Sorry about that, anyway. Uh, back to the Trident. Kind of reminds me of the Pantera a little bit because it's always adjusting its ride height because it's air and it whistles like the same. It's like psh, 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 and you're, you're going like this. Psh, psh, psh. It's always adjusting the ride height. I'm sure there's a button or switch for that. But I haven't looked at the manual to be quite honest with you. Except for when I couldn't find my track spacing because they had it in the corner post. Who has their track spacing in the corner post? I looked in here. I couldn't find it in here. I looked all over the place. It was right there. Anyway, yeah. All right, back at the load station. Jethro for all the jugs and recycling all the bags. Is your bags recycling all the jugs as you can see? Look inside this. It's, it's a 1,400 gallon tank, and it has a, it's an east-west tank, and it has a divider going east-west as well. Kind of feel like they need the divider the other way for stopping and going, but what do I know? And just close it up. Done deal. Let's look at the input.
Well, that's that. All right. Let's get on the road. And we are off for the next field, just like that. We're at our pokey pace of 25 miles an hour. And uh, that's just due to, well, we just gotta get to the next field. It's actually not that far away. Oh, we got Bambi's. We have a ton of wildlife over here. Yep, lots. We've got uh, antelope. I call them speed goats all the time. You guys call them whatever you want. I call them speed goats. And then uh, we've got muleys. We've got whitetail. We've got some moose down here. And uh, there's been the odd elk, but it's pretty rare to find. Pretty rare. They're just passing through for some. Oh, and also we got the occasional cougar. And uh, for snakes, if you go over by Belle Marie, they've got some rattler snakes over there, but we don't really have any around here. Uh, garter snakes is pretty harmless. That's about all we got. Um, we got lots of rabbits, jackrabbits. What else? What else we got? I think that's about it. Gophers. We got tons of those gophers. Tons. We call them gophers. Richardson ground squirrels. Um, if you go over again by Val Marie, they actually have uh, groundhogs. I think it's groundhogs. Groundhogs. They're they're a lot bigger than a gopher, though. They're like two gophers in one. It looks like they've been eating on themselves. And actually, gophers are cannibals. They do eat themselves. Like they could be best friends. Heck, they could be even like a couple. They could cross the road. You run over the one. The next one comes out to see if he's dead. As soon as he realizes he's dead, <laughs> he starts eating away. That's a quality friend or spouse right there. That's quality. <laughs> let's be honest. We all got that friend. It's like, hey, buddy, come on. Let's just go and run across the road. Are you sure? You think that's safe? Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Definitely safe. Oh, oh, okay. And then they run across the road and he gets missed. And he's like, holy crap, we almost died, man. I thought you said it was safe. And the other guy's like, oh, yeah, right. Well, uh, you know, stuff happens. Stuff happens. And then the next time he's like, shoot, I can't believe he missed him. Gosh just looking at his thigh and I'm like <laughs> oh gosh you know I've been uh, working too long or too hard or something when I'm I've got gopher stories running through my mind of how you're trying to knock off your your friend so you can eat them <laughs> all right we're at the field we're just uh, booming out here I don't like this thing's speed change mode stop for speed change mode uh, like that is something that's seriously gonna go wrong it just beeps at you be like, yeah, yeah, you got to stop, bring it to a stop, and change your speed. That, that reminds me of the ideal combines. The ideal combines, five sensors have to line up in order for it. The hopper topper has to be down. Uh, I can't remember. All of the auger has to be back, obviously. But five sensors have to line up in order for that thing to go into its 24 or 5 mile an hour road mode. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck in field mode, which is like this. Oh, heck of a lot slower. I don't like that. There needs to be a bypass because what happened is one of those sensors wouldn't line up and everything was fine, it's just sensors. So this kind of reminds me of that and I don't like that whatsoever. There needs to be a bypass or something because if this thing decides, oh yeah, by the way, I'm not gonna go into road mode. Maybe maybe I might be empty, but the sensor or something that tells you that it's empty or loaded is malfunctioning and it's like, oh yeah, you might be uh, 20 miles away from home, but I'm not gonna go in the road mode this time. So. Things are working pretty good here. We're rocking out at about 20, wide open. Let's idle it down for some quietness. And then we're gonna lose a little bit of speed. There, that sure is a lot better. That's for sure, I gotta turn. There we go. So this is your nudge. So we're always nudging. Stay in the center of these tracks. There is a center button on here, so I don't like the Pro 700. I don't like having to go page to page. You gotta keep this on, the nudge. I like everything one screen, so that way I can do my center button, I can nudge. I can also see my rate, I can see everything on the Viper Pro. I'm not gonna go into that, but uh, I'm definitely not a fan of the Pro 700 and how it's all set up. I know you can customize it with your pages and stuff on your run screen, 
but you still got a page in to find stuff. I'm not a fan of it. Viper 4, you have absolutely everything on one screen. And it's just one single push of a button every time. So we're idled back now. Let's over a little bit more here. There we go. Now we're going to rev wide open. I find this thing to be quite responsive, even with 1,400 gallons on board. Uh, I'd say it has a fair amount of power. All right. I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, holy crap, Mike, you spray at 20 miles an hour. Holy cow. I'm like, no, we don't spray at 20 miles an hour, but sometimes we do. We get a nice wide open field. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll amp it up. We get behind. Sprayers always have to be capable of doing such things, just like the Rogator was, just like the Apache was, the Pantera was unable, but, uh, and the Patriots can, the Deer can, they have to be capable of doing it and being a functional sprayer at that speed. If they cannot, then they're definitely not the sprayer for me. There we go, we'll just slow back down here to about 16. That's a pretty classic spray speed. Um, one thing I also noticed is uh, when you pull back on the hydro, it has a lot more uh, braking power. And I don't mean like with your foot braking power, I mean like hydro stopping power than uh, Patriots do. And uh, the Apache, I would say, needed an engine brake. Actually, I think all sprayers need an engine brake. So that when you pull them back, they don't over rev their engine. Yes, you're not supposed to pull them back that fast. But sometimes if you're going flying past your approach, you're like, oh, that's my approach. Or heck, that's, my, that's a washout right in front of me. Even if you hit that brake, you're going to stop, but you're going to be trying to over rev your engine all at the same time. So uh, I think all sprayers need engine brakes. And they need to be automatic. So that when you, when you pull back on this thing, as soon as it starts revving up, it just instantly kicks in that engine brake. Definitely need that for the Apache because it's a mechanical drive. Oh, and the sound system. We actually have speakers on the outside of the headliner, which is really surprising, actually. It's not much better. It, it might be one little upgrade from the Steiger cab that's on the 44 series, but nope, nope, Case has bad sound systems. But to be fair, they are coming out with new cabs next year for their uh, quad tracks, and uh, so that will be available for us in 2021, the spring of 2021. And then I'm told that uh, they're, I think they're, uh, sprayers are going to be next, like the 1,200 gallon, 1,600 gallon sprayers, 44. And then uh, I hope that they put the Magnum cap, because the Magnum has a new cap as well, on this one, and I'm sure that'll probably be a couple years out. So in a couple years, we're probably going to have some fancy new caps, which is good, because this whole console used to be on the 2166 back in the arc ages. You know what I mean? Like, this is not new technology. This is old. But I do like my, my rocker switches for my seven sections. Yes, you can have individual nozzle control, that's true. But you gotta have sections, and I think you gotta have a minimum of seven sections. Minimum. Especially when you start getting big booms. Why do you need that? Because we're not always spraying by ourselves. And we're spraying with different colored sprayers that can't see each other. So you gotta have a brain on your head, and you gotta be able to see who went around that rock pile, or slew, and manually shut them off. Okay? So I am pretty excited about the new cabs coming out, but they're gonna be a couple years out for sprayers for us for sure. So I'm on my last pass here, and I think I'm gonna turn over the reins to uh, one of the guys. Uh, Jared wants to take it for a rip. Um, Mark's gonna hop on it. He's gonna be fresh off the deer, so uh, he's gonna put out a couple loads with here hopefully and give us some comparisons. And uh, we're gonna see how everything lines up. I have it idled down, as you can tell. It's locked wider. And it's still decently responsive. Obviously, it's a little bit laggier. Now, either Case would have to come out with an engine management program, which I don't really... It would be really nice for this particular unit because it's so loud. But I really don't like the systems that much. I really don't care about the little bit of fuel savings because they're always a little bit laggy. They're always a little bit laggy, even in the deer. And uh, I'm not a big fan of them but in this scenario maybe. But you know what? Nah, scrap it. I don't feel like paying another 80 grand for it. We got a, we got a classic case oil ring 
classic. Happens to case squares all the time. So you gotta have your general purpose O-ring kit. And uh, since they put this bracket in there, you can't actually put a wrench or a crescent on it. So you have to have the right size socket to get it out. Now these things are easy to change. Probably take me five minutes to do it. But still pain in the butt. And uh, well, I guess it's, <laughs> I guess some things never change. All right guys. So uh, yes, I changed the O-ring and uh, Ashton put out a load. Um, Mark put out a couple loads. Um, Brian, also Jared put out a few loads. So everyone kind of got to put out some loads with the Trident. So I talked to them and I kind of got their feedback from each individual. Um, so that way it's not just me doing this because it's not just Mike's opinion, it's everyone's on this operations kind of opinion. All right, so as you can see here, we got the Patriots parked here. Now I'm not comparing it to this particular Patriot because, uh, well, we got a few hours on these Patriots now. But there's some things that they haven't changed. Yes, these are 1,200 gallon Patriot sprayers. These are 2016, 1,200 gallon, 120 foot boom. And yes, you can get 1,600 gallon on them. But they didn't change anything. The cab is still the same. The layout is still the same. We have the Goofy Aim Pro. I would never recommend the Aim Pro. Um, but we do have the Viper. And so obviously now in the new ones, you can have the, everything's integrated into the Viper 4 all through Raven. And you can have all the new XTR Auto Boom. So, but as far as chassis, weight, engine horsepower, blah, 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 it's all the same. All they've done is stuck a 1600 gallon tank on there, okay? That's all they did. Now, the Trident is just a complete different beast altogether. Um, let's look at this. Um, I'm going to put my hand here so you guys can see this. And then we're going to go over here to the Trident. And it's just altogether bigger, okay? This is massive casting. These pins are way bigger. The casting is way bigger. You, it has the air suspension back here. Um, everything about the frame on this sprayer compared to the Patriot so we got, don't mind the old Massey 760 in the background, uh, is way bigger than the Patriot, okay? Same boom that's on them, but I probably wouldn't get these booms unless the dollars told me that I needed to. <laughs> Always looking for a deal, you guys. Now the tire size, you got the VF's uh, 480, 80, 50s, and then over here we're running the 380s, 90, 46s. Obviously, uh, and you know what? These are 480s versus 380s, but you need them because the sprayer weighs uh, weighs more than a Patriot. Actually, let me stop this and give me that. I'll get you that weight. So I just did like 20 minutes worth of like sprayer shootout, comparing the specs from the Patriot, the Trident, and the John Deere, and I realized that I can't put all this on the same video. So I'm just gonna have to call it here, I guess. And uh, if that interests you and more specs, engine horsepower, weight, uh, comparisons, then maybe you're gonna have to check out my other video because I don't wanna make a, I don't wanna make a 50 minute video here and I don't have the phone capabilities and memory storage capabilities to do so. I do not have where I can stick a SIM card in and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to leave it here. I'll see you on the next one.